Boss Talk 101. Yeah, give him a little something Let's different. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me. We doing numbers. Y'all looking pee wee. Y'all looking hungry. We looking greedy. I remember back then we were poke. Now it's a unique hustle. Come shop at the store. We don't never sleep. We on go. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. This is your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day walk on. But y'all don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platform. I'm talking about your Instagram, your Facebook, your Snapchat, your TikTok. You name it, we on it. But the most important place I want y'all to go start going to is our Patreon channel for a small membership fee. And I mean small. Y'all got that money in y'all pocket, so small. Y'all need to go ahead and check out because we will have all our full-length interviews dropping soon on our Patreon page. Not on YouTube anymore, only on Patreon. Wow, man. Hey, man, this guy here don't really need no introduction. This guy right here been through here. This guy frequents the show. This is family. This here is something I don't play with. This guy right here, ever since I, I didn't have but one subscriber, it was me and him. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this guy right here came when nobody else was coming. This guy right here is family. And this guy, then he skyrocketed. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I see him. I don't know if this going to play basketball next year or what. I don't know if he going out to play for the one of them. Definitely not the Lakers. Probably not. He be on them too hard. They're too not. hard. <laughs> Check it, man. Bubba Dub is in the building. What's happening? What's happening? Man, I can't call it, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. You been killing it. I feel like I ain't done nothing. Nigga, man. I ain't. You know what? I'm going to let you deal with it because I know you've been watching. Have you been watching him over there? He, he's straight. You know, when his show come on, it seemed like a crowd of people. It seemed like a lot going on. Like a live Ooh, audience. Mine, mine come on boring when I go there. Nah, you, ain't got, you ain't got your <laughs> flavor yet. When I get to your flavor, I'm going to be good. You're going to get rid of all the people like yeah, that boy. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'll be go. looking for him running through the audience or doing something like that, like it's a big, huge audience. That's what I'll be thinking. You know what? That's live, though. What made y'all do it like that? How did you come up with that concept? I guess I'm trying to turn my show into a senior house show. I'm trying to have some for us. Night, I want a nighttime show for everybody mm -hmm. to watch. So That nighttime show will be hard, boy. That's what I'm building. That's live? Yeah. Wow. You know, when it's live, <laughs> anything can happen and anything gets said. Most definitely. Okay. One thing I, I always try to, um, I was thinking about earlier, and I'm like, I don't remember ever asking you this question, but growing up, were you always into sports, as in loving sports and stuff like that? Hell yeah. Really? Man, I'm from a small town. We don't even have no damn restaurants, so it ain't nothing but the TV. But you never played sports. Yes, I always played sports. What did you play? I played every sport it is. Football, basketball, track, and you baseball. Yes, I played all sports. And wasn't no scrub either. Really? I say baseball. But, uh, I so you wasn't trash? No. Um, I was short. I was that's way shorter than this. I was a midget. That's but, uh, what I was wondering. But I sugar kept playing baseball. I was. That was your favorite. I was cold. But so why did you stop? Dumb, listening to everybody want to play basketball, thinking that shit a white boy sport. When my black ass really had some, I should have just stuck at that shit and stuck in baseball. Mm. If I know again what I know now, I can make it in baseball. So I that's why you know the, so much yeah, about sports. I had sports. a knack for that shit. Yeah. Really? Yes. Love that shit. Love sports. Period. Wow. Yeah. You know, I want to talk about something with you, and I took it kind of personal because I, I really didn't appreciate it. You know, um, you know, we, of course, you know, it's been since the 90s, since we, you know, took it all away. Yeah. The Cowboys. Yeah. And on, on the day when we lost, you know, mm. uh, we made it so far. Yeah. And I see you in the living room. I don't know what's going on, but you, you know, you you seem to be burning stuff. I don't know what's going on. You, I'm like, what's going on, man? Cause next year we might can make it. Might. <laughs> I don't so know what tell TV me what you watching? <laughs> what kind of eyes you got? Cowboy not winning the Mimi Tata. So what? He got a backup jersey somewhere what hidden in the house. I don't. Now, what caused you to uh, <laughs> react this way? Uh, because shit. this was the this was a good shit. Well, yeah, when my the numbers didn't hit. <laughs> my numbers didn't hit. I don't do give a damn about them players. My numbers <laughs> didn't hit. Ball <laughs> high fish grease. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was mad in the morning. I ain't lying, I'm mad. I'm going to tell my what's going on. Go and pack. Quit talking. <laughs> shit, this is how I belong to somebody else. 
<laughs> How much you bet? Me. Uh, them, them, and them Super Bowl oh, numbers boy. and stuff be high too. I love like it. all. But them, why you bet five on K. them? He bet them on them. He betting on the on the numbers. He pick, he okay. Oh, Chubby that's and them how that used works. to come and and with a board. Okay, my daddy he did this our whole life really, and they come on a certain day during the week before the game start. Ah. Uh, I, your numbers, you know, they automatically probably know Bubba Doug because his numbers, you know, you we already pulled the numbers. Bubba Doug, yeah, well, uh, give me give me five squares or give me four squares, mm -hmm. and these squares add up. Mm -hmm. Now you get these squares, and next thing you know, your number may become you get a seven and seven or zero and zero or zero and seven. So you betting on how much they score? No, on. it's the back end of that number. Yeah, I'm right. It's the back end. The back end. So if you get or at the first of the game, if it comes, they got seven and it's zero. Don't know nothing about if they it. got seven and it's zero, you hit. Okay. If they if you got an O and O, mm -hmm. you hit both ways. Mm -hmm. okay. If you got a seven and seven, because it was seven and seven when it, you hit both ways. Mm -hmm. So Bubba Dub sitting there looking at the TV like this. He don't care who when they kick that ball if he can hit that zero <laughs> up there. Right? Sorry, <laughs> Man, because you can run, you can get to spend a lot of money like that. And you can win a lot of money. You too. can win a lot because you hit right. one time, that little old. Is it better than like the horse races? Yeah, it's kind of how your yeah. heart feels, right? You yeah. think it's better? No. I think the horse, horse race is better. The horse race to come in, nigga. You box some numbers, you be down there looking. You don't know nothing about gambling, but don't that damn blackjack. See, that's see, it. See, 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 <laughs> the, 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 the horse is a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, you hit you hit on the Super Bowl, you know, I might pull up in a donk on some mm -hmm. 30s, but that horse track, I'm at the Bahamas when next time you see me <laughs> <laughs> for two weeks. With a jersey with the horse number on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, so, man, you know, um, just being on the side, you know, you when you first started out, you know, you've done everything. You've done the comedy, you know, you done now now you with with the podcasting, with the way you guys have put that together. Well, you know, you talked a little bit about it last time you was on the show in Houston. But just give us a little spiel on how you even came up with that concept and even dealing with that. Man, I would just uh really, you know, I was just gonna really just put up, you know, a regular podcast up and, and do that. And I was doing that. You were doing it. I was doing that. And it was doing some good numbers. I loved it. But uh I always think bigger. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I would, with my I'm building something to where I can really get the, the sports people to come in and sit down and, and chat with me. Not only them, other people as well in the culture. So um, I had been talking to this guy, his name, shout out to Matt Abel. Um, I had been talking, me and him been friends for like three years. And it gets, we've been talking about putting a show together for so long and it finally made sense. So I reached out and uh, I went up there and um, I did an interview with uh, Funny Marco. Okay, and mm -hmm. it's the same day uh, Dwight Howard was there. I, I remember I seen that after I you came on because it hadn't dropped yet. Yeah, and uh, what's so crazy about that? Like it's not scripted. So Dwight Howard was out there in the spring of the whole time. Everybody like, duh, Dwight Howard got there. Normally when somebody out there and see me, they'll come up and holler at me. But Dwight never came out and spoke to me or nothing. So I was handling some business. I had did a skit. And uh, I was up there shooting my own podcast. You know, I, used mm -hmm. to, I paid out my own money to shoot mm -hmm. my own pilot. Cause that's how I do independently, mm -hmm. and I show you how guy work. I come out the room, the White House was sitting right here in this chair. I'm like, this motherfucker bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, you know, what I'm saying he's looking at me like, cause his friends in the back hyping the shit up. That go dub trash. And Dwight White was looking. He like, I'll fire your ass up. <laughs> and I said some shit to him, and he, they, the people were like, shit, go sit down beside him and talk shit to him. And my heart beating fast like a motherfucker because you you don't never know what people kind of time people on. So I go and sit down and talk shit. By that time, fucking Marco come in and they clapping and shit. So I get up and fucking Marco like, hell no, nah, sit your ass back down, nigga. And that gets how that shit went. Mm -hmm. went and it just happened the way it happened. Wow, that was a good episode. And, and that's how I got my show. That, the, wow. the owner seen me go at it with Howard and like, man, I got to have you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just, like I said, I enjoy seeing it now just to see you on that side of the table asking the questions instead of being asked the questions. Correct. And I've seen guests from, what Jock, uh, who mm -hmm. all been on there? You, I know you were checking him out. Mama do. Mama, Mama D. D. Mama D. Uh, Mama D, uh, who else? I got Michael Black. Michael, Michael Black ain't dropped, Blackson yet. dropped yeah, yet. I ain't, ain't seen that DJ one. DJ Drama ain't dropped yet. They, I ain't seen that one. Yeah, DK but it Metcalf was another one, the Jackson yet. guy. Steven Jackson. Uh, Steven Jackson. Shout out to Steven Jackson. Um, man, it was, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When I be saying, I be like, boy, some girl, it was on there, about, it said something about sex. What was that all Suki, about? Suki yeah, Young. I Suki saw that Young. one. What was up with that show, man? Because uh, a lot of people said that, that it was a little different for you. Yeah, that was different. 
they, they got to see a side of me they had never seen before. But, you know, when I did that joke, the boogie eating joke, yeah. well, y'all done been to my show. Yeah, of I course. tell that same joke on stage. Mm. Yeah. So it was just funny how it just came out, just the way it came out. And she was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, we just strictly entertainment, bro. <laughs> so, so, and, and. What's your favorite episode so far, whether it's out or not? All of them. All of my favorite, cause I'm I'm blessed to do it. You know, I could be in the grave, I could be in jail, I could I could be a paralegic. You know, I could be a lot of things, but I'm, I could both eyes work, mm -hmm. <laughs> all my hands and toes work. I'm blessed to be able to interview these people, and because they got a story of their own, and to come from I'm come from from coming in here to our first interview with broke than the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Had a vision, had a plan, but didn't know how I was gonna execute it. And she, I ain't, I can't do nothing but be thankful. Um, Is I, there any story that you heard that um, you didn't know about? Because, you know, when you talk to people, sometimes, you know, you may have a couple of questions and you did your research, but things come out in interviews that you can't find nowhere when you do your research. Well, Suki Younger, you know, I ain't going to lie. We all look at her as sex. We looked at her maybe thinking she was a hoe. And, you know, I guess how us men think, but she's mm -hmm. more than that. She's not that. She's totally opposite. Got a great brain. On her head, a businesswoman coming from nothing. Uh, of course, she's selling sex. I'm not mm -hmm. saying selling her body, but she's a great person. She, you know, so. A lot of these, I mean, there's so many women out here who are just like her. And, you know, I respect her grind and her hustle. So, so I got to Sukiana, man. Uh, I really respect her from that interview. I learned a lot about her. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's one of the women who, I like what she said. She like, she want to be submissive to her man. A lot of these days, these women don't want to be submissive. They want to do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? And um How hard is it for a man to find a submissive woman? It's probably hard. I ain't got that problem. But it's probably hard for him. And for the ones who ain't got it, I pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, when when you come from beans and rice, rice and beans, you Pax. know. And y'all ate out the can together. It's a little different. <laughs> you know I'm from the South. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody like our mamas that can cook and clean yeah, and, yeah. and then be nice in the streets, but a freak mm -hmm. in the bed. That's yeah. what we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So yeah, you that's know, a song. We, don't try to play me. That's uh, a song. Uh, uh, <laughs> a freak in the bed. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a big yeah, yeah. holler. Ooh, I used to love her. I did too, though. man. She was the, I think she was the first one to really just let it all hang out about what she felt about how things were. That was the t shirt and the panties and all hey, that let stuff. Me, let me just say this. <laughs> Shout out to Tupac, man. I ain't know he used to dig a ding a high one. I ain't even know that. But you know, that nigga was slick. They said nigga was like Drake. He was, man. They say Drake like that now. Drake is like that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> But that's good. I mean that he would date people and don't tell nobody. He did it on the slide. Well, not everybody, it though, I get not around. everybody got it. And I'm tired of people always putting their business out in the public, especially with the dating stuff. You know what you I mean? Certain what? things got to be. Well, secret. you know, this younger generation, they do that for clout. They do it to build their brands. If a chick messing with a dude, they gonna like and they gonna mess with her. They gonna talk about it, try mm -hmm. to have a ups on the guy or whatever. But what you think about? Um, and this is off that top. Well, I don't. Want, let me let me stay no, on that no, for a minute. On, let me on. talk about Tupac one more time. No, it's about Shout this. out to Shamaria <laughs> Faith Smith. Uh, uh, the Tupac fan in my house now. She ain't but mm -hmm. seventeen, and she gonna come out when we was watching Poetic Justice. Oh, he fine. Wait a minute. Let me go and put like, you. She didn't say he fine like Damon did on Friday afternoon. <laughs> 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 she just was like, Tupac, Tupac. Tupac. Uh, that nigga wild, man. Uh -huh. I just watched it. That nigga watch on the that couch, too. that nigga grab that couch, that nigga flexing his muscle. I'm like, Make you talk gangsta. <laughs> <laughs> but she do like him. Go ahead, babe. You know I forgot it, right? No, About Tupac? Did. No. The, the, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the question I had. We'll get back to it. This going to come back. After these messages, we'll be right back. That's what they used to say on TV. Y'all remember that? See, y'all too young. Back in the days. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? <laughs> so, I, I, I want to ask you about, cause my, shout out to Young Jock. We going to always definitely. bring him mm -hmm. up. Most young definitely. Jock supposed to be doing our show and he lied mm -hmm. to me. He lied to my wife. Let's just talk about this. He'll do it though. He'll do no, it. No, no, I want to talk about this. What happened at that, that day down in Houston? No, I saw him at the, um, Okay. At the, I went up to the bar and he was sitting over there with, you know, some, I don't know, they're probably on his team or whatever. Yeah. And I told him that you know we've been reaching out to him to do an interview, okay. and they said yeah they saw they saw the they saw the email or and a text and so forth and he was going to do the show and he said when he come back to the hotel cause we were at the same hotel mm -hmm. he'll you know come down to the to the conference room and he'll do the interview but he never showed Damn. up. Damn, 
Shout out to Young Jock. You got the show back Jock, up, baby. You got to pull back up on my Dallas, people, Texas. We got to have you, man. You'll Which I, I know it. I just love messing with him. Because <laughs> she come back. I seen Jock down there. I said, yeah, that nigga in the same hotel. Yeah, good good people live. You know, they oh, yeah, stay close. Oh, yeah, y'all rich. Same hotel. Oh, yeah, y'all balling up here in Boss <laughs> Talk. No, nah, we yeah. just be making our way around, man. Shout out to you, man, for showing us so much love down in New Orleans, man. Most definitely. Man, I had to stand up. You know, I don't like being embarrassed. Like, I'm not no damn stand up comic. And it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stand up boss talk uh, Yeah y'all need to check boss talk I Hey said, man I gotta show you the love, love man. Well, like You know I, I did it for boss lady though you Yeah know. she ain't stand up though It's all good nah, I'm a, She's so bright she lit the whole stage up Cause oh, I'm black man. I'm black You know when she stood up it. <laughs> no, but but you went down to New Orleans, man, and you always going around doing all these shows man I, You know you, you get a lot of A lot of uh, Work, man. You always just going around frequently. Every time I talk to you, out of town here, out of town there, man. How good does it feel to be able to be, you know, love like the people love you, bro? It feels great, you know. Um, I'm still working, boss. So I'm still working, man. I ain't where I want to be yet. Um, so this shit gonna be even bigger. I'm talking about it's I gonna believe be you. even bigger. Yeah, because I'm working. I'm working for it. I'm not. I'm not asking for no handouts or none of that shit. I'm going to get it on my own. I'm learning the business side of things now. Mm -hmm. So, um, from the producer standpoint, okay. executive producer standpoint, I'm learning ownership. I might, like I say, I might not take no money up front. I just might want the back end and yeah, yeah, yeah. on this and that now. So I'm learning all this. I now, when people say what they can do for me, I can sit back and watch. Yeah, now, if yeah. you can do it, do it. Yeah, um, a lot yeah. of time people want you to sign, sign this, and I do this. Now, nah, motherfucker, if you really want to work, do it. Mm. Man, let, let's talk about uh, All Star this time. Yes, sir. Want to talk about the All Star because you went down the All Star. How different was it this time? But now you a vet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? hey, well, I tell, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. It's breaking news. Okay, uh, I got invited this year to Utah um, to Dwayne Wade's party, mm. and I hit Dwayne Wade up in the. Uh, I always hit him up. And trying to get him on my show, Trash mm -hmm. Talk. And uh, he said he going to do it. But he said, oh, you coming to Utah? I'm like, yeah, I'm coming to Utah. I want to get you on my show. He was like, cool. But, you know, it didn't line up because he was so busy. But he said, I tell you what, I'm going to invite you out to the uh, to my party, me and CP3. Mm. So he invited me out. I go. As soon as I step in, everybody know who I am. <laughs> Trash. From CP3 to Kevin Durant. You name it. All of them was there. All of them know who I am. Zion, uh, Mike Evans. I got to him. Uh, Dwayne Wade really, really genuine showed me love. Not only him, his whole family. Mm -hmm. Open, welcome me in. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, good people, man. You know, you hear so many stories about, man, them Wade, them motherfuckers weird. Mm -hmm. They might be, but them motherfuckers rich. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Them motherfuckers super rich. And, you know, just being around and them. They've been working. Yeah, it's being around them and you know, just that shit rub off, man. That mm -hmm. shit make you want to be great when you're around. Greatness. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think the way and way really get his flowers, man. You know, we live in the community because he dressed different now and this and that. But the motherfucker got three rings. He's a Hall of Famer. Like, so you can learn a lot from these type of people. Not only him, just being around him, he brought me into his world mm -hmm. around everybody else. His, you know, his friends and, and shit like that. And soak up all the information, soak up all of that. Networking with them. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I fuck with you. I Like people like Steve Smith, retired Steve Smith, your Dunga Haslam, Quentin Richardson, uh, Jason Tatum, all these guys when they see me, they light up like, oh, shit. Yeah, I call you trash, but it's all love. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, because I'm in a room full of rich motherfuckers. Why mm -hmm. be mad? Exactly. Wow. So, it's love. Man, so uh, let's get back up. Don't try to get, come on back to that All Star game. <laughs> that day, you know, you ain't the same nigga you was uh, when Chat got you down there. You you kind of know where you. Yeah, I'm going in here now yeah. with ambition and trying to figure it out to where I can make it make sense for my brand. Most definitely, I know that's where your head was at. Most definitely. <laughs> so Most definitely. what did you what did you do that you you know kind of. I know. Didn't you interview or something? Did you do something? Yeah. 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 So let, let's uh, talk about that. Gary Payton. Gary Payton. Old man the dude back trash in the day. Mm -hmm. That nigga was upset back in the days when he man. played a nigga. I seen him get a lot of niggas out of that game. Let's hey, talk about it. Hey, real thorough dude. Uh, down to earth. A real a shit He's talker in way. real life. Mm. A real shit talker. A businessman at that. He got a lot of business going on. Everybody know he got the weed strand going on. Right. That shit dope. And he's doing a comedy show. Out there in, um, in the Bay Area, Tommy T's, which I'm going to be there April 9th. But he's going to be there at March the 12th. Okay. And, and he invited me out to come and do some shit. 
with him and uh, on that level. So it's, it's 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 always business, man. At the end of the day, you meet these people, you gotta put you around these people for a reason. Mm -hmm. I call them resources. I have to use my resources. So I'm gonna put y'all on the marketing part of the game. I'm going to the Bay Area April the ninth. I have a show, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna go out there a month earlier with GP GP because he is the Bay. Mm. E forty, I mean, um, E forty and um, two short them. They is the best. Be legit. So I go out there and work with them. Let's network go. with them mm -hmm. a month prior, and then when I go out there, my show sell out. I you know do. what I'm saying? Wow. It's all about marketing. That makes sense though. And so what I did was I had to cut a show short. I supposed to been doing another show Sunday in Detroit, mm -hmm. so I'm just moving it up Saturday. So I'll do two shows Friday in Detroit and three Saturday. Mm. And I'm gonna check out a little Sunday to the Bay Area down there with GP and make that happen. How many shows? How what's the most amount of shows you've done in one day? Minor shows I can done in one day. Really, I always been on um, three. 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 Okay. Um, Cause I know a lot of people only do like two. That's why when you said three, I'm like, do people be doing three shows mm -hmm. in one day? Yeah. Um, That's a lot. I love it. You if you love something, you'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Don't, you don't ever get tired. No, nah, I can't. And it doesn't get, get repetitious. I don't get tired because I remember where I was five years ago, broke, hungry, uh, fighting, fighting to get a name on YouTube, or fighting to get a view. Mm -hmm. You know, so I love this shit. If I can make somebody laugh in this, in today's time, I'm doing my job because. All we've been seeing is death. Mm -hmm. People gonna forget how to enjoy themselves, how to laugh. All we know how to do is cry and be bigger and angry. I'm past that part in my life. That's why I don't really care what people say about me no more. You can't stop what God got for me. Don't matter no more. I'm here. And you can't do a damn thing about it. Man, mm -hmm. I so, like that, man. That's that you got to be ready when it comes down to levels. How how have you really assessed like the levels that bam, I'm on this level, I seen this, man. Yes, man. I know. How does that how does that because work? a lot of people, you know, when you get to a certain level, people call you out, talk about you. And I know I'm at a certain level when I don't respond. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, That's a lion it. don't worry about That's what sheep's doing. Mm. You're right, you're so, right. Giraffes don't I, hang out with ants. At all. So I just, <laughs> I just sit back and I sit back and let people talk, and I sit back and watch the people talk, too. So some people go this way, some people go that way. But I'm still going to be him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that won't never change. No. But I will remind motherfuckers, though, <laughs> where you was when this when the storm was going on, you was on this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So I remind people that shit, though, but man. I don't say nothing. It's all up. I just, I, man, like, like, I think last time we talked, I think we talked about uh, no time before about Chicago, like or, or like yeah. showing you so much love. Like, oh, man, they ready for me to come back. That's right what now. I was about to ask you. Like, right now. we got to get that thing back popping. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Chicago is a we love the windy city, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to that boy Larry Hoover Jr. Man, one of my guys up there. They man. my um, they my number one demographic on Facebook. Chicago, mm -hmm. that's hard, man. That's what hard. state haven't you been in yet? Utah. Well, I no, did a show, girl. You did a show when I was out there, I, uh, Idaho. I ain't been there yet. I ain't Idaho, there. I'm trying to. Oh, you been to Miami already and done shows? Of course. Yes, yes, I've been to Miami. How you like Miami? Miami? Love it. South Beach. You know, I was down there with Floyd, so you know, oh, I, you damn. know, you know, I was on the I was on a whole island with him, so you know, I'm, I'm this man, that shit that's different. Different. That shit. Different. Speaking of him, like, how, how's it been since you know we talked last time? Me and him, me and him, we, we bros. You know, I've been super busy, so I haven't been out there with him. Yeah, you know, yeah. he in London right now, been getting ready to fight. Gets out okay. birthday the other day. He's kicking he, it. He, he, he's flawed. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard to hang with him. It's tiresome. Yeah. It's tiresome. <laughs> I remember you go, told me that. I'm go to bed at four in the morning, up at six, ready to go jog. Huh? Jobs. <laughs> no, ain't nobody could do that. You know, when you go to Vegas, you just get a feel. We just got back from Vegas, and you just be like, "Damn, Floyd!" Like, it, like it's his city to be honest. Wait, it is. That's where it's seen. It is. It's Floyd City. It's his playground. Did you see I interviewed uh, Bill Haney? Oh yes. You know, I'm working, man. Him. I ain't put it out yet, but it's coming. Like, his son got some. He Devin, 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 Devin got some. Man, you know. have you got to meet Devin yet? Or not yet, yet, not yet. He's, he definitely got some. He he like a champ, and he got some belts on him, man. He do. He yeah. He do. Uh, um, about your show, Break the Beat, I know you always um, you always ask the a quiz, but you don't do it on every episode. Why? No, no, I don't. Sometimes, uh, like the trash or fire. Yeah. It gets, sometimes it gets, uh, that shit, sometimes people, we might not supposed to have nobody that day. Mm -hmm. So we really might not have no questions for that day. 
And okay. they just like, okay, we can do it. So I just go ahead and interview them. We got the trash of fire. But that's something I'm going to start putting more emphasis on mm-hmm. is the trash of fire questions. For yeah, because that, that's dope. I really liked it. Yeah. But when I was watching some of them, I'm like, I'm waiting for that section yeah, to come yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. didn't. I'm like, I, dang. We, we still a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Still working. Um, I ain't got it all the way figured out yet. But I'm still mm-hmm. working. And I know which way I want to go. So it, trust me. We talked about that the other day. <laughs> the trash the fire questions is a must. Yeah. Gotta have that. Gotta wow. Have when who do you want to who 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 do you really want to rock with a uh, next interview? Uh, uh, coming <coughs> well, I finally finna get my I didn't got him on the interview, but not in person. But I'm finna get him in person. To okay. I talked to him yesterday. Uh, I gotta go on his show first, but um, I'm gonna get T on the show. Uh, who I want on the show. Of course, you know I gotta get Floyd on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, taking yeah. his precious time. <laughs> uh, Shaq, same way, taking Shaq. his precious time. Uh, my boy Ch- Tracy McGrady. Yeah, um, definitely gotta get him on. Really, man. Um, I want to get some uh, like Denzel. That's mm-hmm. I don't care if it's five minutes. That's hard. I don't care if it's five minutes. Me and I you wanna, both. You I'm send him get, over here for my five. I minutes. I want to get Will Smith on. Yeah, I want to get Will Just Smith. Just don't say nothing, man. Wrong, man. I'm gonna say whatever I want to say. Well, I want to get slapped, nigga. The nigga ah! Money. <laughs> it's gonna be. I it. get that money in the more trash talk. It's, it's, gone. it's <laughs> over, man. That's. I mean, you know, it, it definitely is something I love to do. He he, one of the guys we like to interview. Martin Lawrence is one of mine. I, I definitely like to do more. Uh, who else? Hold up, hold up. Bring you back to Martin. A lot of people. A lot of people gonna remember this movie. Movie. Duke is night out. I remember. Uh, I don't remember that movie, but I do remember him being on. Uh, uh, what's that? What's that sitcom? With rerun on it, you don't remember that, do you? Uh-uh. That one with rerun. Uh, what's happening now? What's, what's happening, happening now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on there, that, and he wasn't nothing like the more Neil now. Uh, Quiet no. as no talking, just handing the nigga that his first? That was his, probably one of his earliest roles. But well, you know, he got That's up on the Robin Harris wings, and he, and it was up. It was over out there at that Def Jam. It, it took he showed to, his butt. It took him to it. another level. So. So when when I say this name here, Mike Epps, man, you ain't you ain't trying to link back up with him. Man, I talked to his uh, manager two months ago. He, all he said was, "Don't be surprised when you get that call to come out on the road." I said, "I'll be I'll be ready." Man, I'll be ready. I will, I know I know he's he's different when you see him. You know, I love to see him on the podcast because he don't really do that many. Yeah, Mike Mm-mm. Mike Mike buying building shit and Mike. Buying everything right now. He ain't trying to. He ain't, he ain't right now. That's he ain't investment. In process. Yeah, yeah, he investing like it, it, it don't matter what type of market it is when you get certain money, mm. buyers or For or real. sellers. It don't really matter no more. But it really do. I, <laughs> I don't even think it's the money. I think it's more of the knowledge because someone can have the money and don't know what to do with it. That's a lot of people. It's right the now. knowledge of how to invest, where to invest, and make that keep growing, no matter what occupation you're in. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kanye West, you know, he lost his money. Uh, shout out to Faze on Love. He said that he didn't lose it. He never have it. It was digital money. Well, I tell Faze on this. <laughs> you see, you see, Adidas done brought him back. No. Oh yeah, let's work some shit. When out. did that happen? I got a billion dollar worth of shit. I can't get rid of it. Yeah, I saw Come that. Yeah. Now I'm not yeah. coming yeah. back. Now, oh, yeah. now it's my oh, turn. Really now it's my turn. turn. That's smart. Now, That's big. Because he had a terrible deal with Adidas. I saw mm-hmm. the contract. I can't tell you from who. What the hell? But I saw Wait a minute. I saw, his, I saw his Adidas <laughs> contract. I can't tell you. And, who a, and you know it was a terrible deal. It was terrible. But now, uh, hopefully, he go and get it right. But people need to take a um, a page out of his book because. A lot of times we do things just to get in the door. Yeah, you understand. But don't we? Don't, we don't want to take the Jew part. Talking about Jew part, got that book. No, we don't no, do that no, 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 no. But that I part. see what you're saying. But you, you get in, although you know it's a terrible deal at the moment, right. just to get your foot in the door. But once you do that, and you, you already have faith in your product, and once it blows up and stuff like that, you know that they need you. You can be like, hey, you know what? I don't need this no more. Let's cut this. Yeah. But they have all that product. It makes sense. What was they gonna do with it? Well, Send it to heard, Ross? You no, know, he know he said some things that rougher fellows in the world that they didn't like. Right. And, you know they figure like, well, you know we'll just move on with God and we are dealers. Mm. But and, they had all that product. So what they was it, what they was gonna do with it? You 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 can't you, you know I hate to say this. I don't hate to say it, but you know you you can't keep a child of God down. Mm, exactly. No matter what you think That's of Kanye, right he's there. still a child of God. That's At the end right of the there. day, he still made Jesus walk. <laughs> you understand? So 
it's a beautiful thing for him to come back now. Mm. Um, now I just hope he make the you know the right choices, the right choices in the contracts he got with them moving forward. So it mm-hmm. won't happen to him or nobody else that's coming up. Mm-hmm. But it's a beautiful thing for him to, for them to have to um, what you call uh, how I'm trying to say that word uh, double back. Mm-hmm. The diggers really doubling back now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I think that um, he does very well is. He 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 learns. He studies. So he, I'm sure the next deal is going to be hey. good. But everybody knows that he's a man that you have to come correct because he don't hold his tongue at all. So you have to be careful of what you do around that man because hey. he gonna tell it. Hey, yeah, yeah. He 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 running his mouth. Like I said, he can he can get all the money back, but he ain't getting Kim back. That's old. <laughs> He Ain't did. he married again now? Yeah, he know. He know it was old. No, he had to. She, she, you no, know, they billioned up, man. It's a different. I don't know how to deal with the billion up relationship yet. We got to get there, babe, so we can have our. But it's I wonder, it's coming. You know that bill, that billion. You know, like you talk about the money, but I'm. I look past the money. Is he one of those people? Because you have people out there like this that can't be single. Yeah. Is he one of those? He probably he probably can't be alone. Can't be alone. Yeah. He gotta have somebody at all uh, times. He had old girl, the ball and might as well that. What was her name? Amber Rose. Amber Rose. Yeah, Amber Rose. He had mm-hmm. up. And might that. as well marry them and have them sign all this stuff to secure yourself legally. I would so never want to live like that. That's just terrible, man. But you the, never the know. to pay somebody to live with me. You never know. So I, mean, I would. You yeah. know, you gotta have that. Like, yeah. if you can't name a bubblegum hole, you leave him with bubblegum. <laughs> Make it real what it is. I know your mom and them happy you with me, but they ain't getting nothing when we, we, we depart. Or maybe it's true love. Maybe they really love each other. I yeah. hope so. I think Kim and Kanye's situation, I just think he was in love with her. She was every fantasy that he had, mm. and she yeah. fulfilled it. Yeah. And yeah. then he just had to have it. Now he, he going on. She went on. She went she on. Went on. She went on. With the guy named Pete or something. I ain't been broke up. Now, yeah, now they she, broke up. She, she, she probably got somebody I don't, she, mm, with me. Not. You will not. I'm playing. Damn. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> that nigga say with me. I'm just joking. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's going on, man? So, when, when you think about, like, when you sit down and you do your show, did you realize, like, Okay, uh, this is what I'm up against. Like when you done it, cause you you a guy that have to you gotta you gotta yo you 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 gotta really you gotta want it like like you gotta be you different, Bubba Dub. You you can tell you real low key, but when you want something or when you when you go and after he move in it, silence. you put it all the way in. But when you chilling watching it, you like damn. Okay, when I get there, if I'm gonna do this, I gotta do this. You think it through Correct. properly, right? Most definitely, most definitely. So so sitting on this side, man. What did you? What was your biggest thing? Like when I when I interview people, what I, what is what's the biggest thing for Bubba Dub? The biggest thing for me when I interview people, uh, I think they I think that Dwight Howard kind of got him on the edge, thinking I'm gonna come at him like that, and I'm not. So that so after I get through interviewing, they're like, I thought it was gonna be harder than that. <laughs> like, no, that that wasn't that wasn't scripted, brother. That just some shit that just happened with Howard, but they, they expect me to come at them like that, mm-hmm. and I don't. Yeah, I just want to sit down and let's chop up some game. You know, I'm interviewing you. You tell me what's going on. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't know that what they need to know, and I just add my comedy into it, and boom, there's the show. So everything is scripted in your show? No, mm-hmm. I'm saying like with Dwight Howard. Like, yeah, that was they it. They think okay, I'm going to come out aggressive like okay. that towards them, saying everything they do is trash, and mm-hmm. but I'm not. I'm just going to sit down with a regular interview and chill and chop mm-hmm. it up. But um, they not expecting that. So mm-hmm. sometimes that leaves me like, damn, do I need to come at them? That's like what this? I was wondering. Do like, maybe do you think that they want that? I think they do. I think they want to see me like that. Right, I think because they that's your character. They want to see me the same way on Instagram. They want to see me like that at my show. That's your but character. But that's a lot of screaming and hollering. I ain't yeah. even gonna be up here screaming and hollering if me and you like that. Because some people might take it wrong when mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm just entertaining. I'm just being me. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like it's hard to judge. You know, like. Do I go this route? Do I go that route? That's why I say I'm still But you don't have to do it for the entire show. You probably no. just bits and pieces. Just like how you say you put your comedy in there. Yeah. You put bits and pieces in well, there. Well, let me ask you a question since you're asking him okay, all these questions. Okay, go ahead. Like, when you Come first on. interviewed Bubba Dub, I remember that interview like it was yesterday. Um, what's the difference in him now than back then? He was quiet back then. He was very reserved. Um he would answer the questions, but he wasn't as talkative. He's he's gotten out of his shell a lot more with interviewing, and I applaud you for that, and I love that. 
Um, but I think that's the main thing that I saw. And I think the reason being is because of all the people that he had to deal with. Right. He had to, they kept coming at him. God kept lifting him up higher and higher. Mm -hmm. He couldn't go in them rooms and be just sitting there chilling. He knew that because at the end of the day, he has to stand on that stage properly. And I'm not just talking about the comedic stage. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just dealing with people and building relationships. Mm -hmm. So there is a way that he has to do that. And I feel like those things, I could tell when he went to this level, to that level by the people that he connected with and the way because you we've been in them rooms mm -hmm. and you know me i came in with my chest out mm -hmm. crazy Cause, as hell cause that's i don't even know how that's i come in are. yeah man i come in like nigga, i got the bill ticket you know i'm yeah. the billionaire around this up <laughs> and yeah, i don't i think it would be like that with anybody mm -hmm. yeah but then different people do things different ways so mm -hmm. what do you think uh uh caused you to progress like you did was it am i right about the people correct and just getting used to it. Yeah, definitely getting used to it. Just definitely. To it. It's I always feel like it's the people around you. Yeah. You know, I want to be a certain way. I know how I'm cool, laid back, and reserved. But sometimes you got to talk. You got to go in and let these motherfuckers know what you trying to do. Because they were you trying to be. Mm -hmm. That's real. And That's I just real. can't come in and just... <laughs> but do you did you research because then also I think that can open a lot of people's mind because then when you're in the world of comedy, you're researching maybe comedy jokes whatever if that's what you do or just looking at your own content but then when you actually go in for an interview you're not looking at how other people you know conduct interviews and mm -hmm. all of that is whatever you jump into as a career or that's what you research correct so going to do an interview at that time that's not that wasn't your focus mm -mm. so now when you do that, you're like, I it's know It's different now because I have to reach out to people. Hey, bro, you want to come be part of my show? <laughs> I hate that shit. I don't like it either. Like having to reach. And, right. And, you know, it works, but mm -hmm. it's just a different part of the I game. Think it's, I'm it, having to learn that, you know. Do and, people reach out to you and be like, hey, I want to be on your yeah, show? Yeah, they do. But most part, uh, you know, I reach out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, hey, bro, you want to come be part of the trash talk show? Yeah, maybe. Okay, I'm coming. And then they don't. I, and they don't. You can't get mad. Hate. You get. Yeah. It, it just it gets life. You can't, but I hate it. Oh, I definitely hate it. But I don't, I don't, um. I gonna hold it to him. No, I don't. Because um, I, I look at it like this. Okay, you didn't come. Cool. Let me work hard. Next That's how he days, is. That's how days. he is. Next time you see from you, you gonna hey, bro, let me get on that show. Yeah, get right. <laughs> now it's on my terms though. Right. I get to you when I get to you. <laughs> That's so true, boy. That's me. You know what I'm saying? Say, listen, man. Y'all better go check out Trans Talk, man. My boy Bubba Dub got a show over there that's going down, man. You just stick hey, stick Trans Talk in there and put Bubba Dub, and next thing you know, bam, you about to see the real man. Yeah, I just, like I said, I, I, I really I admire seeing God work in your life and move you from strength to strength, my brother, for real. Like I think people don't really, you know. I understand it because I see where we coming from and how we dealing with things. And then to see you and seeing your movement, it seemed like we almost like, dang. I mean, of course, you've been doing it longer than me, actually. But I don't know because I've been in this store a long time acting a damn fool. Mm. I just wouldn't. <laughs> but, but I definitely love the fact of how, you, you've, how, how you've grown, bro. And I just want to say kudos to you for figuring it out, man. Appreciate for it. For real. Um, as far as the comedians, when when I think of, uh, I think I asked you about Desi Bank last time and uh, all those different guys that you, that, that circle, man, like, uh, you know, Faison been back on here. A lot of niggas, you know, I interview everybody. Yeah. You know, Faison, he, he, he get a little wild. You know what I'm saying? He say what he say. For sure. He, he's still the OG, no matter how y'all look at it. He go OG. No <laughs> doubt. He look definitely but he OG. But he go cut up, but he don't know the world. So that world that he, he talks about is the way it is because... That's how you see it. At this point, you just gotta let Faison talk. Love it. It don't matter what you show him. He he, he don't give a damn. He still gonna go against it. So mm -hmm. he, uh, I look at Faison like a nigga with the different the difference between Reggie and Kush. Mm -hmm. To him, it's still weed, nigga. Just smoke it. <laughs> so ain't no sense of him arguing with Faison. He gonna believe what he wanna believe, and he gonna stand on what he gonna stand on, and that's that. You can't yeah. do nothing but love him for it. Whether he wrong or right, just love him for it and keep That's it moving. True. Ain't no sense of arguing with him. You ain't going in. No. So, <laughs> he go OG. 
So. No, you you he definitely got that right. He had me laughing like hell every time we talk. So I've been, I interview, you know, I be going around, you know, I got a tour going on, nigga. I go, nigga, I, I show up in a car. You know, I'm going to be in a city near you. You know what I'm I talking about? Know. I said so. say you interviewing somebody in the higher up room one day. I said, God damn, boss talking We got the mics there. The mics work like that. You know what I'm saying? So I went up and, and I interviewed like a couple of people. Some of the episodes that came out, some of them hadn't, uh, Lon, wasn't they Lonzo? Lonzo Williams, man, I'm going in all them old archives, man. I, I go in, I be digging stuff, Silk the Shocker, you know what I'm Ooh, saying? Silk. Silk, man, Silk talks about the Jay-Z, you know, Jay-Z did a verse for him back in the day. Nigga don't realize he talking about from back in the day for 100000 mm. uh, 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 but he didn't even charge him. He 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 gave it to him for free, mm -hmm. but he was charging. He it was worth a hundred thousand is what right. Silk was thinking he was gonna have to pay. And I thought that was hard. I'm like this nigga Jay been stunned on niggas. Yeah, Jay got that nigga. Jay Z, <laughs> Jay Z, Camel Face, Jay Z. Oh, shit. Don't do that. <laughs> that was oh, boss talk. You know we gonna speak the truth. <laughs> hey, he got that bread. That camel Face nigga is that dude. Shout out to Jay Z, man. He figured it out. You know, call him. You out. call him whatever you want to call him, but just put a billion out behind it. That's what he did what he did, That's man. He so he be doing the sports too. See, everybody got an angle. It's something to them sports. If you can get on that with Bubba, them, them smart. Him and Jay Z, and them, them niggas, they taps into the sports market. If you watch them, and that nigga Spike Lee, it's a few of them niggas. They sitting all on the floor. Who is another? And it's like, every sport you do. No, I really, I'm just mainly just been doing football and basketball. That's what I thought. But I'm finna tap into baseball That's, this year, though. You yeah. gonna get out? Oh yeah, Astros. You I know can't what wait. Is. Damn show did. And Definitely. you love baseball, that, yeah. like what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. What other sports? You have? You should try even overseas sports. Here we go. Oh, soccer, soccer coming. Here soccer. we go. Soccer, from is Jamaica, a big, nigga. soccer is huge. Oh, it's real big overseas. So even big, here, like a lot a of people play soccer here. Yeah. Uh, I guess but you need to learn how to speak Spanish, too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I had to catch you off guard if, if you did All I know soccer. in Spanish is, what the work at? <laughs> 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 what about you know track another one you know you you Jamaicans track, you take ooh, them y'all yeah. can, yeah, can run oh they man. taking them they taking that stuff they don't catch you gonna have a lot of Jamaicans <laughs> in your in your in your inbox if you start talking about us man, well you definitely gonna they, get talked about y'all mean Jamaica man the running like is you it's, saying it's retired a, though it's amazing like mm -hmm. how those women and the men that's amazing mm -hmm. boss talk you damn right and it's how amazing. Americans can't come back and catch us because it's amazing he telling you the truth we really not Americans. <laughs> You know, I know I'm not. You know, I'm not from him. Okay, where are you from? I'm from Egypt. You know what I'm saying? The Egypt pyramids. My people, yeah. my people built them pyramids. That's your people, but where were you born? I wasn't born here. I was born in a cave. <laughs> that nigga from yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you go where I was born at, you definitely gonna think I'm it's from a Alto, cave. Texas. It's number K, man. <laughs> okay. nah, nah. Walking the road every day like them Geico commercials. <laughs> Say, so what music you listening to right now, Bubba? Hey, man, ain't nobody gives them out. So you ain't listening to no music. Zero. You still listen to zero? Listen to zero, Nipsey. Um, you still on that old school? See, he young old school. Nobody now. knew. He young old school. Oh, uh, new. Uh, I mean, I'm being I real. Deal with Drake, he ain't new. I love baby. Ain't new. Okay, uh, so them them good dudes though. Uh, so yeah. if I jump in your vehicle right now and pop the music on, what Dolph. is it? Oh, okay. Dolph gonna yeah, Dolph. jump through the speakers. Yeah, okay. Go okay. in, ain't my motivation right there. Dolph will teach you how to go and get it, man. Man, man I'm definitely. So what, what, what? But I got a question. Um, okay, my philosophy is wherever you're at in life, God prepares you for this moment in time. Mm -hmm. So everything that you're going through, you are already prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Looking back in your life, in situations, trials, tribulations, whatever, tell me about a time, a trial that you had that you think now that, oh, that's the reason why I had to go through that because it prepared me for this moment. Like, for your, for your, um, Trash talk, it prepared you to meet all these celebrities. It prepared you for everything. Uh, time, like, uh, let's see. They prepared me for now. Mm -hmm. Something happened before. Uh, I could say a comedy show. Okay. A comedy show I had one time um, with DC Young Fly. Oh, okay. Put me on the show here in Arlington one time and uh, put me up first. Mm -hmm. And I had to be ready. And uh, so that prepared And me. you wasn't ready. Oh, I was ready. Oh, okay. But I'm, I'm talking about the experience part mm -hmm. of like on in life. Somebody hit me up one time, same way. Mm -hmm. Hey, you think you can go on and do this for me real quick? Mm -hmm. And I did it. Okay. So that prepared me to be ready for anything because you never know 
how shit pop up. Like I was mm-hmm. in, um, I think I was in North Carolina, one of them shows, and one of them, um, I won't say improvs. I can't say the name right now. Might have been a um, comedy. It was a comedy mm-hmm. club, and um, I didn't have a. I had a host, and I didn't have nobody to feature than me. It was just me and the host. Mm. Yeah, somebody fa- faked flaked on me. Mm-hmm. So flaked, you had to go longer. They flaked on me. Yeah, they flaked on me, and I was so upset. I, I'm gonna tell you the true story. I was so upset. So I told the host because he was gonna do ten minutes. I said, "Bro, can you do thirty minutes?" I hope I'm not asking too much. Can you give me thirty minutes? He said, "Yeah, I will give you thirty minutes." He did thirty minutes. I did an hour and a half, mm. and uh, I was so mad. Dis- I was just disappointed. And, Does that uh, affect your show? No, I was focused because the people mm-hmm. paid their hard earned money to come see me. I'm gonna give them a show. Okay, and I gave them the show from the start to the end. And like I say before that, I was just so down, and I was still down after the show because some shit happened with the. Uh, with the contract, with the, mm-hmm. with the with the comedy spot, I didn't make the money I thought I should have made. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't on me. It was on the dude who put the show together. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to say no name, mm-hmm. but he know who he is. And I was so mad. I said, man, I could have stayed at the house and made this money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I got back to the room and look at my phone, and it's Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. That's how that whole situation mm-hmm. happened mm-hmm. From, mm-hmm. That, from that to that. That's right. how that whole thing happened. See, God work in mysterious ways. Yeah, but it ain't a it ain't a mystery he won't reveal. Y'all don't want me to go there. No. <laughs> Most y'all, 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 not that it be just running around here with some mysterious stuff going on. God is going to give you the answer. So here I am tripping over a couple of thousand. And God put me... Around a couple of billion. Couple of billion. But I seen that in a, um, a live, two other comedians, I cannot remember their names right now, was on a live one time, and they were talking about that. How many times you go to different venues and they don't be having the contracts correct they ask for half up and whenever you get there try to get your other half sometimes some of them go perform first and then try to get other half and then like well i ain't got all of it or some excuse so people Uh, have to go through that for the people out there that uh haven't been to a bubble dub show you missing the motherfucking treat Mm. Let me just say that you missing the treat. If you haven't been to my show, I know a lot of people say I haven't been to his show. I haven't heard anything I got on YouTube is old. It's not new material. Mm. That's old stuff that I did. I just put that stuff out there. But if you have not been to one of my shows, you is definitely missing the treat. I guarantee you that you're going to get your money's worth. I promise you that. How often do you change content? Uh, I add two or three jokes every show, two or three new jokes every show, every show. Adding stuff to it every time because you have some people who come to your show religiously, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta do but, it for them. But what I'm doing, I don't never want to get rid of what I'm doing because I haven't put out a special yet. Mm. See, go see, see what y'all been seeing. A lot of people ain't seen yet. Really? So I want to put that together in a special, all in one for a special. And then when they drop, and then y'all, oh, I heard that joke, but you gonna hear it on a bigger stage mm. like Netflix. You know what I'm saying? It's different when you come That'd down here dope. and here. So when is that coming? It's, it's progress. Progress. <laughs> progress. Netflix, I'm coming, baby. I'm ready uh, to see you in a movie. Yeah, yeah me too. too. I'm 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 dealing, I'm finally I'm finally around the right people now that's we working on that. Like getting me in some roles and some right. major films. I'm not gonna say my role gonna be major, but you might see me in the major, major movie, movie for maybe two seconds or something. Mm-hmm. But it's my face. It's all about getting your face exactly. out there to these people and getting them familiar with it. You're because in the no door. matter to you, us to y'all I'm bubba dub, but in that world I'm nobody. Mm-hmm. What about but I wanna be somebody in the moon. Exactly. You know, I'm willing to work for that shit. Like mm-hmm. don't no matter what I done done or who I know, when I'm in there, I'm Jerry Morgan. I'm not Bubba Dub. I'm mm-hmm. Jerry Morgan to these people in these rooms. So let me show them who Jerry Morgan is. Mm-hmm. And then let them see that Jerry Morgan is Bubba Dub. Oh, we didn't know. But well, now you know. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Wow. Do you? Let me ask you this, man. Uh, I seen you uh, hanging out with uh, T.I. I don't know what that was about. You and Tip. You know, and uh, I think you tag uh, Dro or whatever, young yeah. young Dro. Uh, yeah. Shout out! I I I got. I, I'm gonna be in your ear in a minute. I got a guy for to get right there at you. But anyway, um, just uh, what the hell was you doing with Ti? Y'all doing comedy together now? Yeah, I went to uh, Ti uh, Trap City Cafe and um, blessed the stage for him. Um, okay, hang uh, on. You know, Ti good people bumped into him. A nice conversation with him. Um, you know, I'm working. I'm that working. 
Okay. I mean, you know, yeah, Tip, he been messing with that comedy, too. So he like comedy. I, 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 it's something that he done fell in love he, with. He love comedy. I know a lot of motherfuckers out there mad at Tip, calling him a snitch. I do not give a <laughs> fuck what Tip is. Do you hear me? I don't give a fuck about none of that, who he told on. I don't give a damn about what that man got going on in his personal life. Do you hear me? I don't. I, that's not going to make me not want to <laughs> fuck with Tip. Mm. Do you hear me? I saw the cool when the tip went to prison for them guns. I saw the cool when he came home. I, this nigga really need to come do a boss talk interview. Much of, that's why I be mad at him. Like, nigga, they, they my don't you on understand? Up. I was with you when you went to prison, nigga. When you was when you went to prison the first time, I said okay, I met him and I got the deal at Caesar's Palace. Me and him was at the Caesar's Palace yeah. together. I started buying a coup. The nigga come home. I meet him at the Takers premiere. I right, here I am spending my money. Right, let me go to the Takers premiere. I'm gonna go holler at my boy Tip. See how he doing. Support him. All right, I support the nigga. The next thing you know, the nigga go to California that week. That same week, do a U-turn, go back to jail. I'm still buying a cute coup the whole time at this store. Buying the shit out Buying the coup, supporting this nigga, man. I'm down with you no matter what you do. Yeah. And at the end of the day, he come back this time. And uh, now they come up with some old footage on my boy. They say he told on somebody would dead. I don't give a fuck. Wait a minute. They say he told on somebody who would dead, his cousin or something, and they say they mad about it. And I'm like. Man, let me say this. I think him and Boosie playing in this shit. <laughs> I'm thinking they getting all the publicity going. They've been shopping that CE. Ain't nobody wanted that motherfucker. <laughs> now they can build up all this heat and intensity. Now this shit finna go through the roof. <laughs> I am think T.I. and Boosie too smart for this shit, bro. I think they shopped that album around and shit fell on deaf ears. They went fucking with it. Now, they building this buzz around this motherfucker. Watch him drop it. They gonna have everybody fool except me. I they ain't, they ain't fooling me. I know him and Tip somewhere making money, bo- laughing like a motherfucker. Nah, Cause I've been around Tip just for a small amount of time. That motherfucker real intelligent. He's small. And Boosie intelligent too. People say what they want to say about Boosie, but Boosie is super intelligent. Mm-hmm. Them boys finna get to that bag. And I won't in on that motherfucker. Man, what you talking about, man? I'm telling Boosie, man, I'm I'm rocking with you, nigga. You over there, Vlad, nigga. Come to Boss Talk. You gotta say, come to Death Row. Come to Boss Talk. I'm gonna start my new tour, the telling tour. <laughs> telling every goddamn thing I know. <laughs> Man, these guys, man, are really guys that when you think about the, the rap game, these guys are, are pinnacles when it come down to what they done during their time. You know, you really can't take nothing from neither one of them. That's what I'm saying. So when people's like, man, I can't fuck with T.I. no more. Man, I don't give a fuck with who. T- he can tell on God, nigga. That nigga made 24. <laughs> ooh, 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 that Do you hear me? That nigga the rubber band, you. man. You don't wow. know me. What? ASAP. Shit. Motivation. Man, I can never turn my back on Tilt. Tilt made that song, uh, uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, then mm-hmm. buck. Yeah. Swing on the nigga, we can throw them mm-hmm. hands up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was him and that boy BG, mm-hmm. man. Hey, shit. Fuck so with Tilt. I ain't oh. And then you can have whatever you like. You know, it kind of took, you know, women on a whole nother level. They want to be commercial. You know, he went yeah, commercial. Yeah, with yeah, that yeah, shit. yeah. He got yeah. that bad. Yeah, he so did that shit with Rihanna. Then you had your boy in the car with him, Mike Epps. I ain't forgot. I seen you in the video. Yeah, yeah. he was doing. Yeah, he would. Yeah. He done yeah. work with a lot of people, man. Hold on. And they did that movie. Him and Mike Epps. Him and Mike Epps did the movie together. Damn right. He, he was in that movie that Get Hard with Kevin Hart and Will Ferrell. The nigga works, man. And shout out to Boosie too on his independent game on his movies and shit. Man, Boosie been going crazy on them game on on, on, the, on the movies and and just his independent hustle. Yeah, I just love seeing black men get, work it out and mm-hmm. and get money. Mm-hmm. I hate when I see the beefing and all that shit. I just look. I think it's just setting us back. Mm-hmm. I think I think they do it. You know, but it's I know it's, it's gonna think, happen. I, it's inevitable to happen. Yeah, but I, I feel like him and Boosie playing those. goddammit. it. I, I kind of agree with your Bubba Dub on that one, man. So I see you hanging out with uh. I, I seen you hanging out with a couple of people. David Bell. Good people. I ain't know he was that fucking tall. Oh yeah, he tall. I ain't know that. And First I be talking. Been, I'm always. I'm supposed to get the interview in a minute. He about six three six four. You know mm-hmm. I'm a little nigga. So mm-hmm. me, I gotta get out of the cell. When I go around those type of people, I'm thinking, man, these niggas don't know me. I'm talking to somebody. All of a sudden, I see a hand. Hey, I appreciate what you do, though, brother. I'm like damn, that nigga really know. Me. <laughs> I go there and talk to him. It's like nothing. Hear me? Hear my number, bro. It's love. Shout out to David Bunn. I gotta give him on the show too as well. That nigga, that bad man. He, mm-hmm. he has a lot him. of knowledge. Yeah, I want to talk oh to him about God, about God and all that. I want to hear all his spiel on how he come up with all this. And shout out to uh, DJ Burn one who 
DJ Burn want to talk to you, boy. That's your right hand man. I need to have him on the show. He already said he's coming. I got to get him. But, you know, that's the whole process, man. It's just a time and linking up at the right time when the universe link you up with these people. Mm -hmm. That's all it is when it comes down to this podcast. I done figured it out. Sometimes you meant to be with this one. Sometimes you're not. There's a lot of people on this universe. Don't trip when, and this is for the podcast. So don't trip when you can't get this person. Go with what God give you and be happy with. It. I got Bubba Dub on Boss Talk 101, one of the coldest comedians that's out right now, one of the hottest niggas. He on Boss Talk and he locked and loaded every time. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm good over here, man. I ain't playing no games about that. Facts. <laughs> Jeez, so facts. yeah, yeah. Top three, uh, whatever. I, you know, I do top three over here. Ooh. Yeah, I, yeah, cause you, you know, you, we did comedy already with him. Top mm -hmm. three, uh, and I better be in it, nigga. Top three podcasts, nigga. In in top uh, three podcasts right now. Right now, number one, I gotta go with Boss Talk One on One. Hey, watch out now. <laughs> okay, and why is that? <laughs> because the love y'all show me when I'm here, man. man y'all give me red carpet. Man. man, I love it. Y'all give me Coca Cola. You got a cup too. Here. You have to show him the cup. You got a cup. You know what I mean? got the cup. Shout out to the Hold on, I got to get this, man. Hey, See that? Talk one on man, one, what a boss is talk, man. And I, who's number two? Number two, I'm going to go with uh, just for the culture. I'm going to go with Gillian Wallow. Yeah, mm. for the culture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Gillian Wallow, man. Wallow uh, did a lot of time, man. Number three, All Smoke. All smoke. All smoke. That's all. Who is that? Steven Jackson and Steven Matt, Jackson. Matt Barnes. Them no boys go hard too, man. I think I think the way he is is so dope, man. How how was it interview? Stack five. Yeah. Down, down the earth, dude. Uh, I actually got to come to his house and kick it with him wow. on another level. Stack good dude, man. He want to see his people win, man. So uh, that's good. So I got to stack five. Gave me a gang of knowledge on some shit. So. Yeah. Mm. I respect him on that. I think this is going to be the last question, man, and you got to be honest. Don't lie to me. I know lying. Oh, you but I had a, a top three, too, because okay. you said, um, but I want to know top three. <laughs> top three what, baby? I'm trying to figure out if I want to do basketball or football. Let's do go. basketball and football. Let's get it. Go basketball? Basketball, but top, not teams. Top three players. Right now, my top favorite, just say favorite. Favorites. Okay, favorites. Favorites. Uh, LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Can we make it four? No. LeBron James. Tracy McGrady. Mm -hmm. Shaq. Okay. And now football. Football top three. Oh, man. I'm going to get in trouble with this one. <laughs> and I should ask you why they're your top three. Can you talk about favorite, but what did they do to deserve that slot? They was great at what they did. And plus, they fucked with me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm biased. Whatever. <laughs> I knew you was going to do I'm that. I'm biased. Football, um, only three. Dez Bryant, East Texas, where mm -hmm. I'm from. Um, number two, I'm gonna rock out with um. Uh, I'm gonna get in trouble. For this shit, <laughs> Come on, but I gotta keep it real because he, because he, because he, because he, he fuck with me. Um, Willie Gay Jr. for the Chiefs, they just won the Super Bowl. Oh, okay, he fuck with me tough. Number three, I'm going to roll with uh, Mike Evans for the Tampa Bay Books. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, here, here's the final question. We're going to get it off of this here. Uh, and uh, I don't want you to shy back from it either. I want you to be serious when I ask you this here. We'll get straight to it. We'll get straight to it, man. Do you think it was staged uh, when Skip and uh, Shannon Sharp got into it on that show? Absolutely not. That shit was real. And what did you think when you was watching it? I, I mean, when I watched it, I knew Shannon wasn't going to go off. I mean, he had his job. You got to think about it. And people don't, I don't know count people pockets, but Shannon only made a certain amount of dollars in, in back then because they make a whole lot of money now. Mm -hmm. They have a show. Shannon probably making about four or five million now. He not finna fuck that up for nobody. Nobody. So I knew he wasn't going to react like we wanted him to react. I just knew that. So that's why when I got that picture, I put on my Instagram. I seen it of him as Suge Knight and mm -hmm. Skip as Tupac. And the next day, 
Shag and show up, say, Shag out the boo dude. <laughs> <laughs> on TV. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because he's singing. Everybody right. tagged him in. I can sing him on my page a couple times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's love. What, what you know, he's he used trash of, uh, often, man. Everybody used trash. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say this right here today. Mm-hmm. And and I'm being honest about this. No, I didn't make the word trash up. No, but it's, that's an old word. But what I did was bring that shit to mainstream like mm-hmm. no other. No sports center, Fox, ESPN, ABC, when none of them motherfuckers calling players trash. Mm-hmm. They would say they were sorry or they wasn't that good. When I start saying it, they start respecting and seeing the movement. Now you see trash. Mm-hmm. That's me. I can take credit for that. With nobody calling players on trash on TV until they see me do it and start seeing Shaq on TNT now. Saying it. Going with the movement. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't create the word, but I own the word trash with the two H's. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... Yeah, I did that. They can't take that away from me. They can say, because a lot of people, oh, man, you didn't invent trash. No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. But the way we say it today, you thinking to me when you say it. And them, them are facts. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I did that. Man. So, I got one more question, and that's it. Um, the question is, it's current events. Um, what you call it? Uh, Chris Brown. Yeah. You see what happened yeah, with him? Yeah, they okay, need to leave him alone. He went on the song with Chloe. And because he went on there, everybody's, you know, bringing back up Rihanna and what he did and so forth. And, you know, he made his comment on that. And part of it, one of his comments, he brought in Blueface and Krishan. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you think about that? Do you think he should have brought them into that scenario or no? Yeah, he got it right. I mean, you know, he defending himself. They can back them into a corner. Of course, he's going to bring them up because that's what's going on. They beating mm-hmm. the shit out of one another. Mm-hmm. Yes, he made a terrible mistake a long time ago with Rihanna. But he haven't done it no more, so it must have been a mistake. Right. Like, leave this man alone. We got to start putting this man. And I know people going to be like, no, nah, it ain't but one Michael Jackson. I get it. But we need to put him on that love up there with Mike. It's, Mike can't dance like Chris Brown. Mike could dance, but Chris Brown. Well, like, oh. Bubba Dub, that boy, you got to get out of my damn stone. Mike, <laughs> Mike, no, listen, Mike, Mike cannot go and dunk. Mike wasn't that athletic. Mm-hmm. No, he wasn't, but he could spin around like a damn top. Yeah, he could, but Chris Brown can do it better. No, yes, he hell can. no. Yes, he can. Yes, he, he no, can. You, yes, he cannot dance. Him. He cannot dance, Mike. Boy. Oh, big boy. I, Mike's still number one. Mike's still number one, but Chris Brown needs to just do. Man, I don't know about that, man. Mike is the best to do it, man, when he slide with them high waters, man. I don't know. And man. back in his mind, that little boy on his brain. Oh, oh no. damn. Watch out now. Man, so I just, you know, like I said, man, I wanted to ask you about uh, that trash word because I know already, man, it's something that I, I only heard you come up with it first. I've heard people use it from... Uh, Daz Dillinger I've heard Him people too. use it from Shannon Sharp and and then I'm like did they give you your, your credit when you when they and I know you like I don't care but I be like man I be getting pissed off uh, at one time I used to get mad when they didn't cause people like man so every time I say trash I gotta say bubble up no you don't but I appreciate Shannon cause I was telling people like man he could at least say bubble dub and some might say he had before. No, he haven't. Wow. So if he had before, then why he come back out and say trash and say shout out to Bubba Dub? See, I only talk about shit I know. I only speak facts. Yeah. So Shannon Sharp come back on TV all day and say trash. I ain't got nothing to say. I wouldn't give a damn. He can say all that nigga, he like Bubba Dub. All, all I'm just saying is nobody in that world was calling the players trash. They were saying other words besides that. Yeah. I started doing it and building momentum. And, I loved it. And, and then they started realizing, like, just let me get my brother right. They are trash. But let me ask you this. 40 years is over. Still my staple. Never. 40 years ain't never going nowhere. Never. Man. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Yes, Bubba Dub, man. Boss, I want to love you, bro. You my brother, man. We family anytime you in Dallas, man. And I know you be everywhere, man. From city to city, state to state. Shout out to the, my boy, uh, Dunk Master, man. Yeah, from city to city, state to state, baby. Definitely. I already know you're going to be doing your thing, man. So, hey, man, thank you for coming on the show. We love you, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the boss just talk. Bow. Bow.